The Dual RVG is a 14 HP wide Eurorack module and it's available in a black or a silver front panel. It replicates the function of the original EMS random voltage generator and uses the original unijunction transistor ramp and hold circuitry. However, the AJH synth version has many additional features that greatly extend its usefulness in the modern modular synth setup. It's a limited edition of only 250 pieces worldwide. Each one is individually numbered and we'll never do a reissue of it. It produces two unrelated random voltages. These can be clocked from an internal LFO or can be controlled by an external clock or the manual trigger button. When using the internal clock, the time between pulses can be randomly varied. This is controlled by the time vary knob and it can also be controlled by patching an external CV to the TV to CV input. Both random voltages have a level control and an offset control. This makes it possible to control both the amount of modulation and restrict whereabouts in the voltage range that the modulation occurs. Channel 1 also includes a slew rate control so that the slew time between the random voltages can be adjusted, creating glide or portamento if used to control the pitch of a VCO. The internal clock can be switched on and off with the run toggle switch, but it can also be switched on and off with an external gate signal to the run GT jack. The internal clock is generated using the voltage controlled LFO, so the frequency can also be controlled by patching a CV to the FQ to CV socket. When the internal clock is turned off, the current voltage is held. When run is turned off, an external clock can be connected to the TRN jack to step between random voltages and the manual trig button can also be used to step between them. The time vary control only works with the internal LFO. It doesn't work when an external clock is used. However, it will respond to randomly timed pulses and each individual pulse creates a new random voltage event. It has both triangle and sawtooth waveforms which are connected to the internal LFO. And a neat feature of both of these is that the slope of each waveform varies in accordance with the time vary control. The more the time variance, the greater the variation in waveform. We've also added a gate output, and this generates a gate pulse for every step of the internal LFO. And the gate PW, or gate pulse width control, allows the gate length to be adjusted in duty cycles between 1% and 99% of the step length. The gate output is very useful for triggering an envelope generator. And the gate pulse width allows us to change between short snappy envelopes or envelopes with a longer sustain for a more legato feel. I've got the voltage 1 output going to the 1 volt per octave input of a VCO. At the moment the voltage 1's attenuator pops all the way down so you can't hear any variance in the, the frequency of the oscillator. But I'll increase it in stages. And at extreme settings, there's a huge difference between the voltages that it produces. There's also an offset control, so I can move whereabouts the voltage variation is occurring. So I can increase it. Now all of my variation in CV is quite high up the pitch range. And I can also shift it downwards because the pot is bipolar. Voltage 1 also has a slew control.
Now I've also got the voltage 2 output controlling the pitch of a second VCO and at the moment they're both set on the same octave but using the offset I can move them away from each other. The time vary control affects the pulse length so as I increase it you'll hear more variation in the time between each of the pulses. And at its extreme setting the, the time between the pulses is very extreme. The amount of time variation can also be controlled by CV, so if I take the output from the CV mix and put it into the TV CV, as I increase the fixed voltage that I can produce with the CV mix, it will add more variation. A signal of zero volts or less will cause no time variation, whereas a plus five volt signal will give a maximum range of variance. If run is switched off, then I can manually step through the voltages using the trick button. You can also use an external signal to step through the CV using the trigger in, so I'll take the square output, this LFO, And as I increase its rate, The RVG also has a triangle and sawtooth output and at the moment I'm using the triangle waveform to modulate the filter and see what happens to the waveform when I increase the amount of time variation. I can also do this with the sawtooth output. An external CV can also be used to vary the frequency of the internal LFO. I connect in a patch cable to the frequency CV input and I'll connect the other end to the triangle wave output of this LFO. And the time variation also still works. And here I've got the sawtooth output going into the CV mix and I can use this to invert the sawtooth into a ramp waveform. You can use a gate signal to run the internal LFO. So I've got the gate output from a keyboard going into the, the run gate input and the output of voltage 1 and voltage 2 going to the two individual filters on the Gemini. So whenever I press a key, The 
dual RVG has a gate output which I'm using to trigger the DHADSR envelope generator and that's controlling the frequency of the Sonic XV filter. It has a gate pulse width control and as you change its shape it will either make the envelopes shorter and punchier or longer or slower. The time vary control also affects the step length and the envelope follows this in a very useful way.